we're going to talk about um, some of our most interesting elements of our flora, some of these disjunct um, species that, that um, you know, ha 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 in Europe have this very um, broken distribution and, and just give you a brief tour of all the different species in Ireland that have these these um, distributions. So it's going to be, you know, just a brief overview, not too scientific, just giving you a bit of an idea of what's what. So firstly, for some context, you know, here's Ireland in its context, a little island on the extreme west coast of, of Europe, um, uh, you know, subject to the Atlantic with a very, um, with, with the, the, the climate that entails, kind of a mild climate, um, lots of rain, very humid. And um, it's, uh thought firstly that um uh, first of all i have to say that um that has a very depauperate flora so much less species than most other parts of europe and it's been and, and until about roughly 10,000 years ago it was mostly covered by glaciers with maybe a small little bits um which would have been expo you know of land that would have been exposed but they would have still had very harsh cold conditions and it may or may not have been um connected to the European mainland, mainland up to about 7,000, 8,000 years ago, and that's still under debate and not really um, sure on that. So um, first of all, to say what a disjunct distribution is. So basically a plant with a disjunct distribution is basically a plant that occurs in very separate areas, so and nowhere in between. So this is actually a, 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 quite an extreme example. This is of a liverwort called Adelanthus lindenbergianus, which mostly grows around the Southern Hemisphere um, down as far as South Georgia Island, and then you know into the tropics, and then nowhere again until the west of Ireland and Scotland. So this is kind of a really extreme disjunct distribution. So a lot of bryophytes show quite amazing disjunct distributions like this, but most of the um, vascular plants are slightly less dramatic. So if you want to, I'm not going to talk about bryophytes today, but if you want to hear about the bryophytes, I gave an, a, a longer talk to the um, National Botanic Gardens um, last month. So the YouTube links there to watch that. And it, that's mainly talking about bryophytes plus a couple of ferns. So um, so why do these disjunct distributions come about? I mean, the crux of the, it, it's, it is either these species are relict of a wider distribution or they're colonized by some kind of dispersal. So that's the two kind of explanations. So they could be, first of all, they could be, could have been, these species could have occurred much more widely and um, these could now be just a the distribution we see is now just a fragment of what was a, a previously a much larger distribution. And they could have been this is idea of glacial refugia. So during the last ice age, that um there could have been some ice free land where these species hung on while the you know the glacier the the ice um wiped out the species everywhere intervening. And then there's the the idea of natural recolonization. So so if the species, you know wasn't here but has come back since the last um last ice age and there's a few different mechanisms for that first of all there's the natural long distance dispersal so so by seed or by spore depending on the species and then there's this idea of the land bridge so this is that you know the island was once you know was was was, was um continuous with the european continent for a while and species gradually migrated across um to ireland and then once the land bridge was lost, then the species could no longer migrate. Then, then there's the human assisted colonization. So Ireland has a long history of human habitation and a lot of you know, trade with other areas and movement between here and other places, you know, particularly Spain and, and, and Southern Europe. And then there's this idea, you know, animal assisted colonization. So birds might bring in seeds on their talons and so on. So that's another possible mode of colonization. And, you know, for a lot of these things, okay, what's the odds of this happening? What's the odds of the species um, colonizing island? But, um, but if you think about it, you know, in the space of thousands of years, you know, little single random colonization events are much, you know, they're much more likely to happen. You know, even just one little event, you know, in thousands of years, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of opportunities for these random events to occur. Okay, so the, the, uh, the issue of these disjunct species was dealt with in an excellent paper by Webb back in 1983, and and, um, and he kind of identified these these species as having you know occurring in Ireland but not anywhere else in um, sorry not in in Ireland but not in Britain so so with a, a significant gap in their distribution most of these actually have a wider gap than just Britain 
So they it's just, so he he identifies for the Mediterranean species. So actually, the dense flowered orchid, their Neotinia intacta, also occurs in the Isle of Man, or at least used to. But um, yeah, it's it, I think Webb's explanation was that he thought it derived from the Irish population, so he included in his list then things like the Kerry lily, strawberry tree, various heathers, saxifrages from the, the southern um, southern Mediterranean Atlantic species, then a couple of American species, then a few alpine species or at least montane species, and then one species that is dis is unexplained. So I'm not going to talk more about the species. So this is the Irish fleabane, Inula salicina, which only occurs in Ireland around um, Loch Derg in, I think it's only in Tipperary now, but it also used to occur in southeast Galway, but it only occurs around this one lake um, on the River Shannon. And nowhere else in Ireland, nowhere in Britain, and, and this question is how did it get there? So it's a really, you know, unexplained um, why it's just in that one spot. Okay, and since um, Webb's paper, we've added one more kind of disjunct species, which is actually what I was originally asked to talk about um, at the, this spring conference last year, um, but of course it was cancelled. So, so I thought, okay, everybody's heard about this fern at this stage, so I'm not going to do a whole presentation on it. But this, um, just to get to recap, in case you haven't heard about it, this little um, fern called Stenogrammatis myosoroides which um, I found very unexpectedly um, two years ago in the Klein National Park on one single rock um, with about 40 individuals in, in Atlantic oak woodland. Uh, so was, this is a completely new species to Europe, um, found nowhere else in Europe, nowhere else um, this side of the Atlantic. And, uh, and, and you wouldn't expect to get this in, in, in Ireland at all. So looking at its distribution, where else it's found, is in um, is is in Cuba, uh, Jamaica, and the Dominican Republic. So that's about six thousand kilometers away, or even more. And and it's found nowhere else in between. Not even on the Azores island, that you, the islands that you can see about halfway there in the middle of the Atlantic. So the question is, how did it get here? So I mean, the most likely theory is that it, well, it must is that that it came by long distance dispersal because these fern has a tiny tiny spores grows in cloud forest at high altitude and the spores easily get into the atmosphere and then the prevailing um jet stream across the atlantic um could carry the spores so it's quite a remarkable story but that's actually the most plausible explanation and it's very unlikely to be introduced by human um human action so that's a you know an interesting and unlikely story and and a lot of these distribution a lot of well, a certain group of, of um, liverworts and another bryophyte share um, a similar distribution. So, if you watch my talk I gave to the Botanic Gardens, I'll go into more detail on that um, on that uh, topic. And and also just to say here that the um, filmy ferns, which includes the Killarney fern, um, they are basically northerly outliers of a tropical group. So, although they're more widespread now in Europe than just Island and ocean and and the far oceanic west. Just you know, they, they they always need oceanic conditions, but they grow much further into the European continent. At some point, they must have jumped in a similar way. So they must have come at some point by long distance dispersal and then become established. So whether um, the Stenogrammatis has been here for a long time, we don't know, and whether it'll, it will establish, you know, whether it'll, it'll persist is also another question that we can't really answer at the moment. So that's just to be written the, those tropical ferns. So I'm going to just go through the other elements um, that, that Webb identifies. First of all, the southern species are so the Atlantic and the Mediterranean species. So, so uh, as, I, as you saw, there was a few species in this group. So, so first, to point out this one, the Kerry lily, Semethis matiatsiae. So, so this just grows um, in two peninsulas in the southwest and the Ivra Peninsula in Kerry and then on the Bearer Peninsula in the Cork part of Bearer and and then basically nowhere else until uh, northern Spain so or sorry southern France as well I think um, uh, so so um, it was thought at one point that it was native in um, southwest England as well but this has kind of been thought that's thought now to be a non-native introduction more recent introduction 
So this is one species which, which has this distribution. And then there's quite a few heather species with these distribution. So the St. Dabiox heath, Dabisha cantabrica, is quite common in Connemara, um, stretching into just into the south of Mayo, and, and, and but nowhere else in West Ireland, nowhere in Britain. And then again, we're talking, you know, the Mediterranean Atlantic region. So again, um, uh, quite vigorous where it grows in Ireland, but no, only in a very limited area and not really anywhere in between. And then on the right, we have the Mackay's Heath, Erica Macchiana. So I'm aware that you might not actually be able to see the names along the bottom here because your bar, the um, bar at the bottom might be blocking them. So I apologize for that. So you might not be seeing the Latin names, but um, yeah, Erica Macchiana is um, an interesting species that um, is only known from a, you know, a few very um, limited sites in Kerry, Mayo, Donegal, and interestingly, it um, it doesn't set seed in Ireland. So it's some um, hybrid Erica exuatii with um, Erica tetralix is 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 much more vigorous and much more um, spreads much quicker. But this just grows um, in these small um, limited areas. Then the third heather. Um, in this group is the Irish heath, Erica erigena, which is this lovely um, big bush in, in the foreground, which grows abundantly in, in certain places in North Mayo. So all of these species, um, well, this, you know, the, 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 the thought now, um, look at the various publications, is that these have most likely been introduced by human action in, in the, in, you know, the past, you know, 5,000 or so years. I was, well, apologies if I got that um, date class wrong, but um, basically by, um, you know, if you look at their distribution, they're, they're in limited areas, usually near the coast, near routes where people would use. So thought is made by, is, is by smugglers, pilgrims, and so on. So they might have used the heathers as packing material for um, for what they were smuggling or what they were transporting. So, so, so there would have been a lot of um, trade between Ireland and Spain, a lot of movement between Ireland and Spain going back in, you know, back in time. So, um, so that seems to be the most likely explanation for these species. Um, is there anything? I didn't think that was what, what I was going to say. Then there's other species with these Mediterranean and Atlantic distributions, so like um, the Irish birds, Euphorbia hiberna, large flower butterfly, butterwort, Pinguicula grandiflora, which are both common in Southwest Ireland. And well, Euphorbia grows scattered up the west coast of Donegal, but is mostly in the southwest, and Pinguicula is only in the southwest, and where, where it's you know quite a common species in the right habitat. And then the two saxifrages, St. Patrick's cabbage, Saxifragus spatularis, and the kidney saxifrage, Saxifragus suta, both, again, you know, common in a in in the west of Ireland and, and in, the, in the case of in the south well southwest mainly for Suta but Spatularis in the mountains up the west coast and a bit further east as well and again you know it seems interesting that they have this distribution so again not nowhere between here and northern Spain so yeah the the origin of these is still kind of unknown I guess Rory right, can I jump in there mm. and. Uh... Uh, give you a one minute warning. A one minute, okay, right. So I'll just skip through these. Uh, and this is just, um, actually, I'll skip through this as well. Um, just to say, this is um, a photo I took in Greece of this um, the, about 12 years ago um, on an excursion. And, and I just found these photos recently and said, oh, I recognize that species growing there. And it's this um, cottonweed, Achillea maritima, which is an island is found in only one place in Wexford where it's greatly declined and it used to be found in Britain and other parts of Ireland um, on the coast, but has now um, now been lost. So, um, so, so, so I, I won't go into the story now. Then the American species, Nosparanthes on the right and Hypericum canadense, the Irish ape John Twitter on the left, which is, um, um, and again, how did they get here? So these species are interesting because they, you know, well, as 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 John's talk showed, the Spiranthes is widespread in America, but only restricted to the western seaboard of of um, of uh, Europe. And 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 are they relics, or have they been brought in more recently? Are they more recent introductions? 
And again, with the blue-eyed grass, the Syrinxian Bermudiana, and the uh, pipe rod area colon, which is, again, you're wondering, you know, what, what is their origin in, in Ireland? Then finally, to move on to the mountain dwellers. So 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 Ireland has a very depauperate mountain flora in general. Most species here being, you know, most of our mount, few mountain species we have are much commoner in Scotland, Wales, Northern England. And, uh, and here, you know, um, we're kind of just on the edge fringe kind of um, less, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, um, kind of, you know, species growing less well on the edge of their range here and just hanging on in a few spots. But we have two species that have never been found in Britain. So the first one is the recurve sandwort, sandwort miniata recurva, which grows in, in, in two sites, one on the Bear Peninsula and the Cork Kerry border, and one in the Cumara Mountains in Waterford. And then there's the fringe sandwort, Araneris ciliata, which only grows, well, quite abundantly on the Ben Belbin Plateau in Sligo and Leitrim. So, so the question is, you know, where, you know, how are these relics? So genetic work has, I think, has shown that the most, you know, genetically it shows that most likely they are relic populations that hung on through the last ice age and, um, and uh, you know, are just hanging on here and, 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 and just for whatever reason haven't persisted in between here and and um, their continental populations in you know, Portugal, Northern Spain, the Jura Mountains, that kind of area would be the nearest. Then finally, this is the Irish saxifrage, which, well, was previously found in Britain. Um, I think it, it, it was seen in Wales, known in Wales up to about 1970, but hasn't been seen since. But in the in Ireland, in certain places, it's um, quite um, abundant and uh, and and grows quite well so just yeah so, so anyway so i'll finish there as i know i'm over that over time so this is just you know to give you a brief overview of of these interesting distributions interesting species and just something to think about and 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 to you know to to see what 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 interesting things we have so yes i'll leave it there thank you